Hello and welcome to Pedantic Hand Wavium, the podcast that tries to apply science to fictional worlds. I'm Simon. And I'm Jeff. So, so Jeff decided that he was going to do the research this week, which is great because I didn't want to do it. And so... Yeah, it'll be great. Just as We'll a, get through this together. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, Jeff, I didn't allow you to introduce yourself. Um, or did I? No, I did. Okay, good. Uh, so, Don't worry about it. So when Jeff told me the name of the thing we were doing, like, you know, five minutes ago, I looked it up on Google, and the first thing describes it as a weird fantasy novel. That is the genre. The genre is weird. <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, it's pretty great. That being said, we are discussing a China Mieville novel called Perdido Street Station. It's a great name. Yeah, it's the name of a station on Perdido Street. Oh, no, I meant the the middle of the city. But yeah, that works too. Oh, the author name. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so what's the first, what's the first thing we're trying to solve? Um, Yeah. So, a general overview of the book it's kind of like uh actually let me just pull up the uh wiki here i just like to say i do all of mine off the top of my head (laughs) i generally do not um maybe that's why we don't have any listeners there we go okay yeah it's described as blah 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 early industrialist uh industrial capitalist world Blah, 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 Victorian kind of era, also kind of magic, also a lot of tech. So, yeah, that's kind of your starting point. So, kind of a grab bag of any sort of thing. Yeah, it kind of sounds, uh, there's a lot of animes that are like that. Uh, yeah, actually, yeah, there like, are quite a few. I think there's one called Steam Boy, Steam Bomb, uh, something like that. Yeah, yeah, Steam Boy sounds familiar. I remember it being very confusing yeah. and not understanding any of the plot. Yeah, no, that that's the recollection I had too. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I guess we can dive right into it. You know, there's other... Oh god, Was there a main I'm character? A th- well, yeah, but he's also just like a human guy. Oh. So... I mean, there's his girlfriend, which is kind of uh, an insect lady. But, you know, evolution, that should be fine. It's easy enough. Yeah, also, you know, freewheeling sexuality, man. Oh yeah, definitely. That's uh, <laughs> pretty par for the course for China Mieville, actually. Well, I mean, to each their own. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, getting into some... More difficult to explain uh, species. Uh, Let's start off with, they're called uh, handlingers. They are parasitic, like purple colored hands. Yes. They come in two varieties, uh, the left hand and the right hand. This is the best thing ever. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Cool. So, yeah, do you want to start with the left-hand variety, which are, like, the noble class of handlingers, or the right-hand variety, which are soldiers? Well, well, how are they different? So, there is... Well, which one do you want to do? Because they have two special powers. Okay. Um, okay. Well then, well let's do let's do a general thing first. Because first of all, you've described me a chiral creature, which is weird. Yes. Because right. so uh, chirality means that they're non super like your hands actually are a really good example of chirality. <laughs> they're non superimposable like the creature we're discussing. Yeah. Uh, uh, mirror images. So like if you were to place one hand on top of the other, your thumbs don't line up. Which is weird in creatures mm-hmm. because it's expensive, right? It's just right. like genetically expensive because you have to, you can't just replicate what's on one side on the other side. Mm-hmm. That's so weird. Okay, so apart from that part, it's just 
Okay, yeah, so the similarities between them is, I believe it's like a spike that they just plug into a person and basically take them over. Okay. So I guess we can start there. Is, um, is this spike, like, this is going to be a tough... <laughs> <laughs> is this spike like are they like sticking a finger in the person is that the spike or is it like a spike that emerges from them and how big are they um i think they're just like hand-sized like that's not creepy. um they're described <laughs> as they i believe rest on their host's head and have like the in spike the spike in the back oh, of their neck so like a tail and then yeah, okay. basically. Yeah. And then they just have the host wear a hat. You know... To hide them. This is a lot like um, Half-Life. Those are the monsters from oh, Half-Life. Oh, with the... Yeah, the face crabs. Yeah, or whatever they're called. Face crabs. I forget. Anyway. Yeah. Spike in the back of the... Well, I mean, eh, I guess it... Well, okay. So, here's the thing. Are the, mm-hmm. are the people they control still alive? They are still alive. I don't believe they have any of their own functions, really. So, like, mind and body are just taken over. Or maybe just the body's taken over and the mind doesn't matter. Yeah, well, that's what I was thinking. I was like, because if you're jacking in, what they might do is just, like, sever the spinal cord and then Mm -hmm. input their own spinal cord into, into the place. Of that. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. I don't remember, couldn't find anything without flipping through the book that I don't have on me anymore. (laughs) Um, If they, like, unplug from the host, if the host, like, dies. That's fine. uh, Which would, yeah, it, it would make sense if they just sever the spinal cord and, like, take it over from there. Yeah, and so, like, your brain is still getting, like, blood flow and oxygen and stuff like that because it's still running your lungs and your heart. But you mm-hmm. are just trapped inside your own brain, able to see out through your eyes. Right. Yeah, so that makes sense. But, That's, like, a pretty straightforward But maybe not, kind of because explanation. wouldn't you still have control over your mouth and face muscles? I don't know. Hmm. Do those go through your neck? I don't think they do. I'm not sure. I thought, like, like all facial nerves are, like, hardwired in. Yeah, I actually have no idea if uh, they go down and then back. Well, we'll just say they don't, so... <laughs> well, we'll yeah, say sure. they do. We'll say they go down <laughs> and back. <laughs> yeah, so complete control. Yep. Great. There you go. This, is, this podcast <laughs> is easy if you just assume the wrong thing is the right thing. <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, that's what we do most of the time anyway, that's true. so we're fine. Um, so yeah, I guess we'll then get into the differences between the two uh, flavors of Handlinger. I guess since the left-hand version is less over-the-top kind of silly, we'll start with there. Good. <laughs> and that is they can just turn off... The, like, Lights. abilities of the right hands. Um, okay. So, like, they can't have a host, I believe, and they can't do any of their soldier things. But they can... So they just become, like, a useless hand. Oh, okay, okay, okay. They just become a hand that's just not attached to a body. <laughs> well, like, you know, it is still mobile and can walk around on its fingers, but it doesn't have a host, I believe. God, that's creepy and weird. Um mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, well So there's like a like a bug thing, right? Like a What like what if it's like a like a pheromone thing? You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, um, okay, yeah, and it just blocks yeah, um, whatever process they need for, like, their stuff. Yeah, I was thinking, like, not not like queen bees, but, like, um, ants. Like, ant colonies? Aren't ant colonies kind of mm. controlled okay, by Okay, so yeah, there's, like, different alarm pheromones. So rather than a pheromone that is danger, don't go here, or danger, everybody attack here, it's now you 
like physically cannot do a thing. Yeah, yeah. You you can't use your own or like your your compulsive. You're compulsed. That's not the word. Compelled. That's the word. You're compelled <laughs> not to. Yeah, and it, and I mean mm-hmm. like there's gonna be like some bad evolutionary thing like it's like a like a control mechanism like right right this way this way like the alarm creatures and the worker creatures in a species don't need to share whatever like, like the full like um, burden cost that it would take to make yeah like the pheromones yeah yeah that makes sense or 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 the full okay. cost of like what it would take to look out or what it would take to be a worker so like workers are probably mm-hmm. like stronger or something like that well lookouts right. are more like perceptive mm-hmm. okay that makes sense to me okay yeah i can get behind that and yeah then there's the right hand ability which i admit probably wasn't presented in a great order but much more difficult to explain. The right hands, after taking over host, can make them fly and cause them to shoot fire. Boy. <laughs> yeah. That's a, it's difficult, that's huh? Like zero to 60 <laughs> power there. Huh. Oops. Yeah. Bumped into my mic. Wow. Well, okay. Can they fly? Yeah, I figured this one would be more difficult for you. Can they fly or can they jump really high? Uh, I want to say it was fly. So they can, like, change direction and stuff? I believe so, yes. And this is Earth, right? Not, like, maybe some place that's made of copper? <laughs> that's, um, like, maybe only at, like, 40 degrees Kelvin? I mean, <laughs> I guess it might be... I mean, these but it's humans, like right? everything is described mostly as Earth-like, aside from you know, titanic creatures living in the ocean. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna assume it's not a giant ball of copper that they're on. Right. What if? What if? Um, the hand crabs. Hmm. Um. Man, I hate levitation. People need to stop doing levitation. It's so tough. Yeah, it's real not great to explain. I just I just edited the Avatar episode, so now all I want to be is like the hand the hand crabs fart really hard and it blows blows the people into the sky. Like I Yeah, it just reroutes the host digestion. Yeah, yeah, to fart. (laughs) To fart real hard. It just it farts into the air and the Crabs just, or the hand just, thing? The hands just ride along with them? Yeah. I mean, I the only thing I can think of is you need, you need a <laughs> system of propulsion. <laughs> or mm-hmm. you need to, like, affect gravity in some way. Or you need... To unlock the host's latent psionic abilities. Or you need magnetism, is what I was going to say. Oh, yeah, that works too, I guess. What what could create... What if they're, like, really powerful electromagnets, and they, like... uh, They need, like, the metabolism of the host in order to be strong enough? Oh, can can the hands not fly without a host? I don't remember. I think it's the host that can then fly and shoot fire. Hmm. I, uh, for flying, um... Or maybe it's just the hand themselves. Yeah, I mean, without without magnets, it's so... Oh, no, yeah, it does say using the body of their host. So, yeah, the host can fly and spit fire. <sighs> hmm. What if? Okay, okay, I gotta not be mm-hmm. that close to my mic. <laughs> what if, instead mm-hmm. of, like, they have to use the nervous system, the electrical components of the nervous system, to generate mm-hmm. a strong enough magnetic force that they can repulse? No, they can create like a, um, like they can ionize the air. 
and then and then they can create an okay. upward draft with that ionized air. Mm-hmm. And for some reason, human beings catch it and they fly. <laughs> Um, uh, I mean, it's a better explanation than I was able to think up of, like, on my own, which was none, because well, I, I found this one difficult. I think the best one is is, is farts. Um, Just the farts again. But, oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. What if, what if they need a bladder of air? What if they need to fill the humans with a less dense gas so that they can fly so like they fill all the cavities in the human body okay and, um, and they just are all in, like balloons we might be able to work with that yeah just whatever the handlinger does makes a byproduct or it like filters out you know less dense air and pumps it into the host yeah okay yeah and it just happens to not cause them to balloon up yeah. For reasons. <laughs> yeah. It's it's not Earth. It's, not, it's a different yeah. atmosphere. It's not Earth. It's a denser atmosphere. They have like uh what's that stuff? Uh argon? No. Xenon texa hexafluoride? Something like that. Sure. Yeah, I like that. So so they just have they just balloon up and then and then they fart to control where they need to go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That yeah, works. Human beings. Yeah, just... well yeah, if everything is filled with the uh gas the with the lighter gas yeah sure yeah uh and then how do you explain the fire well the human body already creates just methane. similar just like yeah 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 there you go that's the expulsion of the gas out the mouth light it on fire simple enough got it guys everybody farts <laughs> solve so many problems <laughs> it lets you get away with so many things um okay so, are you content with your uh, with your farts? I am not only content. I think this is one of the best solutions I've come up with. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. Um, moving on. Uh, it's another can be really easy or really difficult to explain, depending on what flavor you have. These are called remade, and they're I mean, like they're people. Or animals, usually convicts, usually as a crime, um, that through technology and magic are altered somehow. That can range from rotating the person's head 180 degrees and tacking it back on backwards, or replacing the person's torso with a furnace, and if it stops working, the person dies. Good. Okay. Yeah. So quite a range. So it's like it's like uh, Island of Doctor Moreau kind of mm-hmm. weird stuff. Cool. Uh, yes. Um, let's think. So yeah, I think like the more straight biology kind of just rotating the head can be chalked up to they just invested a lot of time and energy in. Surgical you know, perfecting procedures. surgical procedures, yeah. yeah, and like grafting on animal parts and stuff, yeah. yeah. So the the bio end of it makes a lot of sense and is pretty easy. Well, um, I'm sorry. Continue. Well, I, no, you can go. I, I was gonna. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so the bio bit is easy. Uh, the difficult bit is. Like when you just replace, you know, the arm with a, like a crane, like a small crane, or the torso is now a furnace. So how do you incorporate, like, the machine into the person like that? I mean, I mean, we have prosthetics. (laughs) Well, yeah, but not prosthetics that replace your metabolism. So, but that's what I'm like, I I think if you, if you can come up with. Uh, a society whose surgical procedures are advanced enough that they can disconnect and reconnect all the nerves in the neck backwards. Mm-hmm. I think you could come up with a society that has surgical procedures <laughs> that can do like replace all of your 
like do a T one thousand or T one hundred where you like just use mm-hmm. the person's meat as like a bag and then you like put like steam powered pneumatics into them and the furnace is like the steam power is like the heat for the steam power. Okay. So yeah, you're just saying it's the natural conclusion of this uh surgical medicine. I, I... I would avoid the word natural. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, uh, I, I, I think it would be possible. I don't think it is like the inevitable conclusion to modern <laughs> medicine. Uh, so you will not let me put words in your mouth. Noted. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> <laughs> Just like it's good to know when I'll be called out. You're at like American Medical Association, American Medical <laughs> Association conferences, and they're like, and so this is our new chem- uh, chemo drug, and the eventual outcome of this will be furnace in the chest of convicts, <laughs> <laughs> and all the doctors just like, yes, congratulations, yes, we're so close. Ah, <laughs> oh, yes, good, good. All, <laughs> all human. <laughs> Medicine up to this point has just been trying to put a furnace in a man's chest <laughs> and find a reason for it. I mean, that's been my personal research <laughs> this whole time. I don't know about you. Uh, um, yeah, so, like, what if that's, like, what it is? It's, like, just, like, steam power. And then, like, the crane is just, you know, prosthetics. Yeah, I mean, I guess that makes sense. Like, if they are able to wire up the nerves and everything that's sure yeah i mean like i feel like once you can get a connection between the nerve and something inorganic Mm -hmm. then you're probably pretty set on like bio prosthetics and okay i mean it would just need like um its own power source But, I mean, I feel like we can just assume battery technology is good Mm -hmm. at that point. Or, well, I mean, if it is a furnace also. Yeah, if it is a furnace. it's its power source. It just is the power source. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, that was easier than I was expecting it to be. Hey, man. Good job. Proud of you. Thank you. I mean. Yeah. If you give me intergalactic travel, don't know how to do that. (laughs) <laughs> Put a furnace in a man's chest? Easy. I got, yeah. You could do that three or four ways. <laughs> <laughs> um, Alright, so I guess we'll move on to the next terrifying monster. These fellows are called Weavers. And they're, like, 20 foot tall, mostly spiders, that can... Yeah, that's a good start, isn't it? Uh, it gets better. Um, so they're able to see, traverse across, and manipulate the fabric of uh, space-time as easily as a normal spider interacts with its own web. Does this mean it poops out space-time? We are getting to the creatures that poop things. Don't you worry. Okay, good. I wanted to make sure. I think I think from now on, every episode should have at least, you know, it should be at least 20... 20- one far and one poop reference. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I mean, it, it's modern comedy. It's got to have those things. Right, yeah. <laughs> so, a, uh, so uh, are these, like, spiders with, like, human... Bo- like, centaur spiders? Um... Well, here, let me send you a picture and then try to explain it for the listener. I'm going to try um, to explain it, or you are. Oh, you can try to explain it once you see it. Sure. Okay, so it, it looks like some kind of, like, maybe dinosaur. It's large. It's purple. It Its head seems like it's too large for its body, and it's surrounded by children. Jeff, this is weird. (laughs) 
what link did you click? Oh, no, I was just making the joke that you sent me a picture of Barney. Oh, okay. No, that one's coming later. Don't worry. So what I like about this picture, so uh, it's a spider. It's a spider. <laughs> it's what it is. <laughs> but unlike most spiders that have like clearly defined heads, its head is kind of like just like sloping out of its body. And then it has two what looks like human arms dangling out of its mouth yep. or neck. Are the Yeah, well, yeah, it's close to the you know, a little thorax. So I would also like to say that this thing only has four legs and then it has two arms, but it has eight limbs. Doesn't this mean it? Wait, do spiders have eight limbs? Spiders do have eight limbs. Yes, they have eight. Okay. So Yeah, in the illustration it has eight. that I sent you, it has like six spider looking legs and then two human looking arms yeah so those arms are part of the spider right okay so is the spider keratinous keratinous card chitinous there you go chitinous i believe so yeah but it's so their chitinous yeah i guess they also just have fleshy human arms okay <laughs> <laughs> i would i think i think the arms are more like like they're arms, they they are all arms, but like they're more mm-hmm. like bags of flesh that get like filled up. Like they're organs that are external. Like there's just like holes in the spider's shell. Where like oh, so they continue being like, uh, like insect limbs and not like they don't have bones in them. Yeah. Right. Okay. I, that's what I was thinking. Is more like it's more like still like an insect kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But now, so, yeah, I I agree with that. So you say they control space and time. Yes. Okay. Okay. Wait. Uh... Yeah, I mean, like as a for instance in the book, in order to, like, they just kind of show up. Sometimes, yeah. oh, well, this is where I am now. I'm going to take everyone's left ear. And then they just do. That's crazy. Well, at least that's kind yeah, of accurate. they're fun. So it's more, like it's, it's more like a play on causality. So it's like um, the reason no one has any left ears is because in the future, no one has any left ears. <laughs> Yeah, I believe it's described as they just kind of, like, follow their whim. Like, aesthetically, they're into asymmetrical heads right now. So they just take everyone's left ear that happened to be in the room. Okay, okay, okay. So? Yeah, so control space-time. What is, they just uh, kind of appear. Uh, I gotta think. Because you, yeah. you can't control space-time... I'm trying to think, like, <sighs> field theory doesn't really help you control space-time. Mm. However, can they go in either direction? Obviously, they can go forward. Can they control the flow <laughs> forward? In, in um, I believe so. Yeah, I think they can just do what they want, when they want, as long as they want to do it. What if, ooh, 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 mm-hmm. what if they're Go not on. actually going back and forward and, and distorting space and time and all that, but what they're actually doing is creating illusions and they're convincing mm-hmm. their victims that that's what they can do. But instead, they're, they're just like doing normal things. Okay. Yeah, that's an interesting tack to go down and will kind of naturally lead us to our next monster. We'll look at that. So yeah, they just happen to be real tricksy. Real tricksy. And people misunderstand them. <laughs> right? Yeah. Much like <laughs> much like most monsters who are horrifying and I hate <laughs> people just misunderstand them. Like spiders, you know. <laughs> it's it's not that they actually control time and space because that's terrifying. We just don't notice what they're doing most of the time. 
Yeah, I think I think that makes more sense. That they're just like real good at taking people's ears. <laughs> and so people are all like, all right. oh, I've always had no ear. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, sure. It's it's not so much that they've oh, I've always had no left ear. It's oh god, why is the side of my head bleeding? Oh, that's even easier because then you could just like rip someone's ear off. Yeah, no, they definitely just do that. Oh man, maybe maybe they have like they excrete like rohypnol or something, and so it just kind of like blocks the person's ability to make long term memories, and then they rip well, their let's... ear off. Let's not get too far ahead and of ourselves. Then, and then the people's brains fill in the gaps, kind of. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's a much easier explanation than them actually being able to control space and time. So I'm <laughs> I'm apt to lean this way. Yeah, sweet. Rather than just deity level powers. Yeah, deity level powers. So the next one, now that you've basically tried to start explaining it already it is called the slake moth it is a giant moth with mesmerizing wings that eat your mind like they like they eat their mind like metaphorically like oh you've like they mesmerize a victim and then physically digest the brain use the their proboscis get it into an orifice and then eat their mind, the victim's mind. Not the brain, the victim's mind. Can they do this with any creature? <laughs> they go after sapient creatures. Uh, obviously sapient, non-blind creatures? Correct. Okay. Uh, if you are blind, you cannot be mesmerized by the wings. And actually, if you look at the wings through a mirror... You will not be mesmerized by them. So I guess, yeah, we can we can break this down a couple of ways. Um, we can start with how do the wings mesmerize people? And then move on to what exactly are they eating that cause their victims to like still be alive, but essentially catatonic. I'm going to go on a limb. I'm thinking like deer in headlights. Like I'm thinking if if you can create enough uh or ooh 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 mm-hmm. even better part of hypnotism is right. that you kind of overload the brain with stimuli and the brain just kind of doesn't know what to do with it so it kind of shuts down right what if that's what it is what if it's not only what if, what if it, there's just so much information that the brain See, tries to that's take in? where i started when i was thinking of an explanation but looking at it indirectly cancels the effect. But that's what I'm saying. So maybe it's like a really precise amount of information. Because it's got to take a lot of visual information. Oh, or it could be um, like something that isn't reflected properly. So like yeah. there's some wavelength that bounce like scatters when it hits the mirror yeah rather than direct to the viewer yeah which makes sense i mean a lot of wings particularly bug wings are like that they they don't work so well when light isn't directly hitting them Mm. yeah okay yeah yeah i like that yeah i like that explanation i guess we'll then move on to what exactly are they consuming because there's no tissue loss There's no tissue loss. Correct. I mean, aside from, like, any violence of, like, tearing into a person's head. But they're not, like, eating the brain. They're not eating the skull or anything. They're just eating the mind. What if it's, like, but, like, what if it's, like, lobotomies? But I don't know how they're going to get energy from that. What if they're just really mean? (laughs) They're just mean. They just do it to spite (laughs) people. (laughs) That's a pretty horrible thing to do, just to give someone a lobotomy just to spite them. And to subsist off of it? Yeah, I guess. But, like, what... what? Yeah, like, what are they eating? What are they digesting? Maybe it's electrical energy. Okay. Like, um, I don't know quite how that would work. Much about the brain in particular? Well, yeah. I know enough to know that it has enough of a charge to light a light bulb 
Mm -hmm. But it doesn't seem like that's a great source of energy. Right. What if they Um, are instead hmm. drinking blood out of the brain? And the... Okay, and yeah, just like the other, like, fluid in general. Yeah. Is what they go for. And so instead of getting, like, you know, instead of... They're not eating the brain. What they're doing is a starving in of blood and oxygen, and parts of the brain are dying, like, during a stroke. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I like that actually, because that explains the the like why people go catatonic. And in the novel, there is a character who isn't fully fed on, that isn't wholly catatonic, but it definitely isn't who they used to be. Yeah, and like you know, they need help eating and bathing and etc makes total so sense. yeah that explains that really really well actually yeah it kind of seems weird that they would grow to absorb the blood which is not particularly nutritious and just avoid the mass of fatty tissue that's right there <laughs> right <laughs> i don't know real hard to to drink with a proboscis i guess you mean to eat yeah tomato tomato <laughs> <laughs> I guess the next interesting bit from the Slake Moth is the byproduct and waste material that is used to, A, I mean, naturally they use it to feed their, like, young, the larval forms, Mm -hmm. but it is also a strong hallucinogen in people. I mean, your feces are... Strong hallucinogen in people. I haven't tested that, so I don't know that to be the case. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if they actually are. Aren't. Oh, I thought you meant mine in particular. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've tested that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, yeah, but isn't it just like inhalants? Like, what if what if their byproducts are just like the stuff they put into dust off that people use to clean their keyboards? Uh, like, yeah, that's pretty much what I thought. Just. Through whatever digestion it happens to make, you know, whatever hallucinogenic substance. Yeah, or, ooh, 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 ooh. Or maybe it's like a mold. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's like a spore. That, and it's, and it's, ah, uh, what's that, what's that disease you get from dried rat poop? Ah, uh, oh, I forget what it's called. Yeah, oh, man. Okay, so it's like mm. that, but instead of getting you sick, it just gets you high. It gets you really high. Yeah, it gets you sick. <laughs> Yeah, my old man is showing through. Not my old man, like my father, like my inner old man. That you are an old man. Yes. Yes. Dried rat poop. Look at it. Dried rat poop just also is now dried slick moth poop. Yes. In this one. All right. Yeah, now that I figured that. I think that's the most of it, unless you want to go on. Like, I have some more, Uh, but we're also uh, pretty late on. Do one more? Yeah, just just okay. to make sure we have at least enough audio. So there is also. Let me pull this fellow up. Well, now this one's this one's pretty simple. This one is um basically the ghost in the machine concept. Like there are constructs and robots that exist, and over the course of you know whatever programming errors that accumulate, they become sapient themselves yeah but there's also like a hive mind element to it weird and there isn't really an internet that's described in the book like i don't think they really these constructs interface with each other necessarily to um proliferate this code how might like these bugs and code proliferate in like non-networked environments okay so right i'm trying to think What is, like, the airborne illness version of something for a robot? Computer. Do these robots have Mm -hmm. the, not metabolisms, but the ability to manufacture things in themselves? Uh, It, I think, actually affected, like, any kind of robot. So it could be a construction robot or a soldier robot or, like, a vacuum cleaner. Well, well. So yeah. it, yeah, it can affect anything. That's t- so. What I'm thinking is, is what if there was like a a virus that could create its own send and receive signal. Okay. It would create its own antenna, and then when it transferred to a different robot through just 
mm-hmm. the electromagnetic waves and downloaded itself there, then that robot would create its own antenna. But I don't know if that really works. Right, yeah. And, well, I could see that. Like, as the virus proliferates and the generations go further on, that it is more able to interact with what is available. It's Yeah, that's possible. That makes sense. That's what I'm saying. Like, do these robots have enough of a complex internal network that they could create a totally new thing? Uh, yes. In the book, they create a giant... But I mean, like, in... in... Out, like, a district of the city construct it makes. But, like, inside of themselves. Like, I make... Uh, inside of themselves? Yeah, like, I make poop. Can <laughs> they make antenna? I mean, like, it could just use whatever is available and, like, co-opt something that is, like, close enough. If they're not connected to anything, that's kind of tough. Like, why would the hell they have an, an antenna? Maybe. Ooh. Maybe they are the ante- Are these metal robots? Uh, I believe they're mostly metal, yeah. Assuming they're not aluminum, maybe it's just a really powerful signal, like Wi-Fi signal. Mm-hmm. And it's using the body as the antenna to spread it. Mm-hmm. And then... It yeah, just... and then just whatever happens to pick it up and it gets integrated into... Yeah, yeah, like it kind of like short stuff joins out. like that hive mind. Yeah, yeah. gets downloaded into like, uh, what's the word? Flash memory, and then the flash mm-hmm. memory mm-hmm. gets transported into longer term memory, and then you have a virus. Right. I like that. It's weird okay. virus. Yeah, that that's fairly straightforward. Yeah, look at that, easy. Yeah, and we're out of time. Hey, we did it. Oh yeah. So thank you for listening, everyone. I don't remember what our sign off is. I think we mostly just kind of start talking about uh, liking us on Spotify and iTunes and subscribing to us and going to our website, pedanticandwavium.com. Or pedantichw. Or pedantichw.com. Yeah, we thank Joe Sobchak. We tell people to give us so, uh, show suggestions. Oh, yep. Yep, do that. Give us show suggestions. Show suggestions show suggestions or don't because there are plenty of other china mieville books that i can go down on. so yeah but when we do that i don't know anything about what we're talking about <laughs> that's fine it's easy i usually don't know anything about what we're talking about yeah but i care more about me than i do about you <laughs> uh, that's fair i'll give you that i can't fault you that <laughs> mostly just just share us like us Share us with your friends if you found us. It's very good. We're very good. We're hilarious. Yes, we're great. You loved us. <laughs> and don't worry, your farts don't contain hallucinogen. Only your poop. <laughs> All right, and with <laughs> that, I've been Jeff. <laughs> I'm sorry.